important thing to remember about um, Montessori teachers is that they take this very intensive training and um, then they go out and hit the reality of being in the classroom. But every Montessori teacher is, they're unique. They came with unique um, skills and information, personalities, but there are some commonalities related to the stages at which teachers develop. And over a period of years, Sharon Dubel did some work and then created an outline for us of how a Montessori teacher develops over a period of years in the work and what they need as support. What are the characteristics of those stages and then what they need for support. So once again, we talk with that, start with that formal training and that development um, that they have as a teacher is always happening within the context of the school. So I'll give you an example. If a teacher is just hired, comes into a primary classroom, a children's house classroom, and uh, there are 25 children, but 20 of them are brand new to the class that teacher's development is going to be a bit different than the development of the teacher who's going to come into a class that's brand new with just 10 three-year-olds. So we always have to think about that development within the context of the specific school and the specific school culture and the specific class. But the awareness of these stages of development helps us as administrators really support that um, growth and development. So that first year, what we call the neonate is when the teacher is just going through survival and they're trying to take that ideal from the training and making it real and just work within the classroom. That teacher generally is very idealistic. They have the training. They want to do it just like they did it in the training. Um, they really tend to want to do it on their own um, because they really believe in the Montessori pedagogy, but they also can be very vulnerable that because they can feel that overwhelming responsibility and they're sensitive to criticism. So when you get a parent who comes in is constantly challenging them as a new teacher, it is really, really hard for that first year teacher. What they need is that freedom without abandonment. They need to be able to work in the class, but know you're there but they also need an orientation to the school culture. So that's the time that you're going to include that new teacher in whatever way you can in how do we operate in this school and how do we provide support? In that first year, we just protect them from stress if we can. Um, we try to make sure there's one key person in the school that they're interacting with um, we give them the hands-on support with practical tasks. That means if all of a sudden there's a big project that they have to do and it's the first time they've done it, that someone else steps in and says, I can help you with that or I can help you make the materials. And they, their connection should be with trainers. This is not the year that we want to give them 15 different conferences on obscure topics. They need to just focus on what they've learned. The second stage of teacher development is usually between the second year and the fifth year out of training. Their task at this stage is to integrate the practice. So during these years, the teacher is getting past the first year. This might be the time where they're beginning to integrate their skill with music. Maybe they play the guitar. That might be the time that they start to um, really think more about how the theory is connected to the lessons they're actually giving. Um, they begin to be able to give individual pre presentations or an elementary group presentations, but still see the whole class. Um, when I took my training, they gave us um, a picture of concentric circles, five concentric circles and said, every year, if you start in the middle circle, every year you see a little more of the classroom, but it might take five years before you can actually be giving lessons and really know everything that's going on. Also beginning to learn about how to deal with parents and that parents sometimes have similar problems, questions, concerns, and you manage them the year before and now you have a little bit of 
a toolkit in managing them. So those characteristics at this second stage, teacher is really gonna be in these years, very focused on the class. They're very motivated, very self-directed, making lots of materials and they're gaining confidence and they're really happy. This is a period where in this cycle, teachers tend to be feeling that joyous exuberance of being a Montessori guide. So during this time, the administrator needs to give them attention, specific feedback. This is where peer observation can be great, um, where you really set up goal setting so that they can do a lot of self-reflection. Um, this is when you have to do the very best you can not to give them uh, a classroom full of older children all at once in the third year of the cycle. Um, you want to try to keep with a formula of bringing children in from the lower ages if possible. And this is where you can give direct input. And the administrator will say, is there anything I can help you with? This is what will happen during this, this period. Continued education now related to Montessori, this might be where they can go to other courses and gather some skills that would enhance their Montessori training. This is where teachers love to get together. This is where a group of teachers might have once a week, um, you know, tea in the afternoon after class, and they just sit around and want to talk about pedagogy and what happened when you gave that lesson. So um, where they talk with each other about what to, what, does this feel right? Is this on target? Am I on the right track here? The third stage of this teacher development is what we would call renewal. They're coming back again. This is a really a critical period of development for the teacher. Um, this is where we can lose our teachers because they start to burn out, especially if they've had a hard year or one or two hard years along the way. Maybe they're tired of giving the same lesson um, so if the teacher is assisted during this stage, if we're really listening to them and we can help them rededicate their commitment, we will probably keep them for a longer time. And I feel like I know for myself, when I came um, to Child Peace, I was often at the beginning getting brand new teachers. And a little bit later, as I hired new teachers, I got more of them in this period because they were maybe work, had worked at other schools and they were just thinking they were tired, they wanted a change and then they came in. And luckily I did have enough experience that I recognized that stage and, and work with them on how to sort of regenerate their enthusiasm. This is where they can be vulnerable. They can start to be really rigid. Don't tell me anything. Please don't tell me, I already know this. Um, other people in the community, including parents might think of them as being difficult. And you might not see that same enthusiasm that you used to see coming from them. So what do we do? Um, this teacher needs to understand that big picture, um, talking about career path options, um, investing in their education and training. Um, I had a fantastic teacher who was in this stage of development right when the opportunity to open that intergenerational program came up. And guess what? When I was talking with her, I said, what do you think? And she said, yes. And she really got into that challenge of learning about working with seniors and starting the new class. Um, the same thing just happened as I was leaving Child Peace, a teacher that was the second teacher at that intergenerational program was in this stage. And because because we had to move out of the assisted living facility because of COVID, she was so excited about finding a new physical space and creating the new classroom space and where would everything go? It really regenerated her. What that support looks like here, talking with them, especially in their professional development plan, um, you know, how are, how are you doing? Is there anything you're interested in doing? Maybe this is where they start helping someone else or really being a mentor to someone else, but beginning to get them to put in writing, how are you doing with your work as a Montessori teacher? What else will make you fulfilled?
that seasoned teacher is beginning to really what I, I think of, what I describe is the full integration of Montessori into your life. It's almost like this teacher is at that point where they couldn't live their life without Montessori. And they begin to get so challenged. This is when so many teachers are taking on um, the courses on inclusion and how to work with the children with special needs. This is where they want to um, add tools to their toolkit. They're open to ideas and um, they even don't mind if you criticize them. So they have less need for that external feedback. By now they've figured out classroom management and how things should work. They have their systems and they really, really go to principles and values. They are the senior citizens, the wise people in your meetings. So this is where you want to ask them, what else would you like to do to enhance yourself as a Montessori professional? This might be the time that they might want to take a leave for a while. Maybe they want to go work on an adolescent community for a half a year or a month. And as administrators, we really need to be aware of that.